Iron Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in Newham Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on you Irons! Welcome back to the West Ham Massive. Thank you for joining me. Um, please don't forget, put a like on the stream. Make sure you leave your comment in the section below after you've heard what I've got to say on the following topics. Uh, don't forget to share the stream to your socials. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you for the, all your support you've been giving us in the last couple of weeks since we've come back. And don't forget to hit the bell icon as soon as anything pops up on the channel like this, you will be given a notification. So a couple of stories I want to have a little bit of a get your thoughts on in the comment section below. Two stories doing the rounds. One's relating to a former West Ham player. It popped up on news yesterday that the former West Ham youth player, Divine Mubama, who left the club in the summer, his contract came to an end. It would appear he's now going to Manchester City, which is quite bizarre, very strange. And I mean, for me, I thought he was someone that we should have given a few more opportunities to. I thought when he when he was utilised, he looked busy, he looked strong, looked like he really wanted it. Maybe in terms of some technical aspects, I think he he needed a bit of work. I mean, his first touch could be a little bit questionable. But that being said, I thought he always put himself about. I mean, he, he played the game away at FCSB. He, uh, he, we thought he got a goal, but it was eventually credited as an own goal. Same in the Burnley game last season at Turf Moor. We won that game 2-1. And <clears throat> he was part of the turnaround. We were 1-0 down. Again, a goal that initially we thought was credited to him. But... He had that goal taken off of him. He did get a goal in the first team, and that was in a Europa Conference League game, the home leg against AEK Lamaca. So, but other than that, I mean, he, he, he probably got used very sparingly. There was numerous times when, personally, I thought that the, the, the striker who was on the pitch, which a lot of the time was Mikhail Antonio, was, it wasn't working and, you know, he would, uh, David Moyes, this is, would persist with putting someone like, um, excuse me, <coughs> sorry about that, um, Danny Ings on the pitch or whoever. And then, you know, so you can understand from the player's point of view is he probably thought he needed to get away from the club, fresh start. Despite the fact it was probably common knowledge that the guy that was not utilising him was going to be replaced. So I held out a little bit of hope at the time that he might sort of come round and sign a new contract and see how it goes, but it wasn't to be. And he's obviously, contracts ran down. There was talk about Sunderland being interested. And I've heard another club, um, Familiar, Familiar Cow, I don't know, it sounds Portuguese, I've not really looked into where they're from. They're not a club I'm overly familiar with. And then all of a sudden yesterday pops up to say it looks like Manchester City might be sort of getting getting together a little bid for him. I say a bid, as I say, he's out of contract. Um, despite the fact he's out of contract, though, we, because he's a youth player and it looks like he's going to another English club, this will go to a tribunal. We will get a payout. It's not going to be sort of mega money, but we are talking about a, a player that was really unproven at the top level. 
So we'll probably get somewhere about half a million, million, maybe a bit more, something like that. Now, from the player's point of view, I guess, you know, the pros are that he will have the opportunity to, if he, if he stays in the first team squad, if he works around the first team squad, to work with the very best players in the business. And more primarily, he will have the opportunity to work alongside or under the best coach in the business, arguably, Pep Guardiola. So that can only be good for his technical flaws that he's got in his game, because you thought someone of his curve will iron those out. The cons are is that probably he's not really going to get too many more opportunities from the bench at Manchester City when the striker in front of him is Erling Haaland than he would at West Ham. So he's just transferred the problem from one club to another, as far as I can make out. I don't know. Seems a bit of a strange one. I also sort of got a funny feeling he may actually find that he's going to get loaned out anyway. Now that may actually, in the long run, might not do his career a, a, you know, an injustice. It might not sort of be an obstacle. You know, he might have to go away, say to a Cardiff City, for instance, play a season there in the champ, and if he does well, possibly he can go on the bench at Man City. I don't, I don't know. It could play itself out a number of different ways, but. It seemed a bit of a strange one. I wish the kid good luck. It didn't work out at West Ham. I wish it would have done. It didn't. I'm sure he wishes it would have done. It didn't. And we move on. Bit of a strange one. <clears throat> but let me know what you think. I mean, you know, was he was he a player that maybe should have got utilised a bit more, do you think? Or do you think, actually, we are where we are and we just sort of got to get on with it? Um, but what do you think about the fact that he's popping up on Man City's radar? I mean, that's that's a strange one in and of itself. But let me know what you think. Comment section below. And then we go at the other story. So, this is the story about Carlos Soler. Now, this story's been bubbling around and it, it seems to be gathering more momentum because this, this story does seem to be persisting. And there's numerous news outlets that are reporting this. So it just makes me think that there's there's definitely something to this. There's definitely a little bit of credence to the story. So <clears throat> Carlos Soler, currently a player at Paris Saint-Germain, Spanish international, actually won an Olympic silver medal for Spain. The finished runners-up to uh, Brazil in, uh, I think it was the... Olympics in Tokyo, if I remember correctly. He was part of that squad. He was also in the World Cup squad of 2022 in Qatar. Um, came through Valencia. And he obviously then got a move a couple of seasons ago to Paris Saint-Germain. Now, technically a very proficient player, from what I can see. At PSG, he has been... A player that's not, on most occasions that he's been utilised, has not completed 90 minutes. A lot of his games, he'll be coming off the bench. And even the games he starts, he's usually given the shepherds and pulled off. So, but, as I say, technically quite, quite proficient, it seems. He's, from what I understand, his English is pretty good. Growing up, he would watch Premier League football on Canal Plus. And by virtue of watching that religiously, he learned English by all accounts off of the back of it. And his English is pretty good, from what I've been led to believe. So, the fact that this story is, is persisting about this player, the fact that I believe there's still a little bit of business that Julien Le Petitgui wants to do. And yes, I know, I mangle the pronunciation of his surname every time. What can I say? Um, but listen, it, it, in all seriousness, I think the manager, as the, the head coach, excuse me, has turned around and made it clear that he still wants to do a bit more business, still wants to hone his squad further. I also do wonder, 
And this is me just putting two and two together and I might be making 36 or there might be something more to it. Because Carlos Soler is, I would, I would liken him stylistically, maybe not in terms of capability, but in terms of style, I think he's quite similar to Lucas Paqueta. Now I'm wondering, is it going to be that Carlos Soler is going to be eventually the player that replaces Lucas Paqueta? Now I don't expect Lucas Paqueta is going anywhere this season. There's obviously the betting thing that's still hanging over his head. That's yet to be decided. But let's be completely honest. If things hadn't have gone the way that they have on that front, he'd have probably already been a Man City player. It's a well-established fact. They put in a bid for him. It was all pretty much done and dusted. They were going to go ahead with it beginning of last season and then betting scandal reared his head. Man City backed off. If that hadn't happened, he'd be a City player already. So, I have a suspicion that if this betting scandal gets ironed out and he's proven not guilty, then I think at some point shortly thereafter, you'll probably find that Lucas Pekatar will move on to pastures new. And that's fine. Not a problem. So long as he gives his all while he's in Claret and Blue and we get a decent amount of change for him to allow us to do some business, I've really got no problem with it. But I think that this is possibly a little bit of succession planning on the part of Tim Stuyton and head coach. So it may well be that for the first season, if we go ahead and do this, and a lot of this is going to hinge on the finances because, of course, we have been spending a lot of money, so we've got to make sure we operate within the profit and sustainability rules that are in place. Otherwise, there will be implications for that. Um, but I have a suspicion that Carlos Soler will be the heir apparent when Lucas Pacatar does eventually leave, which I suspect will be sometime after he's exonerated, if he is, for the betting scandal, the betting uh, issues that he's got, irregularities. So I think that's that's going to be how it works. He will be a replacement for Pacatar in matches this season if he comes in to allow Pacatar rest, recuperation. He's not going to be flogged week on week on week, 90 minutes every game. Carlos Soler can come in. There'll be the odd games when he may even start ahead of Pacatar in certain situations. But beyond that point, it may well be that Soler is the next cab off the rank when Pacatar moves. So I think there's possibly some legs to this one. As I say, not just for that fact that the story seems to have been perpetuated for quite some time. Numerous news outlets are reporting it. But I also think the fact that, hold on a minute, we're probably going to need a replacement for him at some point. And it's probably better to get him in now so that he's got the time working alongside the player that he will eventually replace. And then obviously sort of go from there. But as I say, seems a decent player. I think a lot of it, like I say, though, will hinge on the finances. But have I seen too much of him play? Not that much, little bits and pieces, as I say. But as I say, he came through at Valencia. He's obviously played as Paris Saint-Germain for a couple of seasons. Um, 27 years of age, so you'd say that he's approaching his peak. I think there could be a, an opportunity there. But let me know what you think on that one in the comment section below. As far as Carlos Soler possibly coming to West Ham's concerned, are you in favour? Are you not? What do you know about him? Let me know your thoughts. And also about Mabama going to Man City. And guys, please don't forget, drop a like on the stream. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new around here. Hit the bell icon and share it to your social media platforms. Thanks very much for your time, guys. Stay safe. Come on, you irons. Iron Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in Newham Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on you irons!